In the last video, we stopped by just sending and receiving one packet using Scapy, using the Scapy interactive console. Let's continue learning Scapy basics because we've just started scratching the surface. All right, so I'm, I've got my Linux Mint virtual machine here and I've launched Scapy with sudo Scapy and I have the prompt here, the Scapy prompt. And so what I can do now is the last command that we did was we did p equals send and receive one packet to my gateway here at 8.1 and it was an ICMP packet and we put in some raw data, some text. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to change this up a little bit and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of sending the destination to an IP address let's try it out with a domain name. So in the in the interactive tutorial at scapy.net, they use www. slash dot dot org, and they also send an ICMP message, and they put in a, some raw text, a series of X's, and this is literally what they have in the interactive tutorial. So let's check it out. So we send it. You can see that uh, begin. Uh, a mission, finish sending one packet, let's take a look at it. So we say P and there it is. There's the packet coming back to us. If we want to look at it in, in a long format, we can use the dot show command or show method and we can see it kind of laid out and you can see there's the source address from slash dot back to this virtual machine, Linux Mint virtual machine right here. And you can see that it's an echo reply and there are there is the raw data being sent back to us from the original echo and so that's pretty cool. All right, so now that we've learned that, what else can we do? All right, so what we can do is, in the next one, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna do a similar one except I'm gonna do a DNS query. And this is also an example that I picked up right from, right from basically the interactive tutorial at scapy.net. So the destination this time, I've modified it a bit here though. So 8.8.8.8. I'm going to use Google's DNS server and instead of ICMP, let's try out UDP. So we use UDP protocol and forward slash DNS. We're going to use DNS and then we're going to put in a DNS query. So our DNS query is going to be right in here. So we're going to say rd equals 1, so recursion is desired, so we want to, this will be a recursive query where they'll resolve it for us and just send us the answer. And then the uh, query, the query domain will be uh, DNS query, okay, and the Q name query name equals and we'll just put in we'll put in my website just to resolve that so that makes it easy so okay okay the query number is DNS query the query name there we go and then we need to close off these so we have one and let's see here we have this one and this one so it looks like I think I need two more closing parentheses and so we'll send that. And there we go, it sent one packet. So let's take a look at that. Um, also, in the example they give, they don't necessarily use the P equals and put it into a variable, they just send it on itself. Let's see here though, if we look in P and we take a look at what, we're got, what we've got back here, okay, query, DNS query, there's the query name, and then the answer, we're looking for an answer. And our data, let's see here, resource record name, type A, and there it is. There is the IP address. So it looks like it worked pretty good, it, we, it returned. Also, if you don't wanna throw this variable in here, what you can do, it looks like, yeah, this is the DNS response that we got back, and it looks like it worked. Notice it's from Google's DNS server, to my computer and I have the uh, the data was resolved. This is the DNS query response. 
So um, also, if you want to get rid of that, if you don't want necessarily to put it into a variable and show it that way, you can just send it with a send and receive one packet, just like that, and it just returns and and then you don't have to, it just returns automatically and shows it to you in the command line. All right, let's move on. So that was a couple of examples of sending and receiving one packet. What if you want to send and receive continuous packets? So I've got an example of that. So let's see here. We want to send and receive continuous packets. And once again, I launched this from the command line, right? I, I, I launched basically this uh, this this scapy interactive console by just putting super user do sudo space scapy and it runs the console for us. So this time what we're going to do is instead of doing an sr1 it's just going to be send and receive. So send and receive continuously and it's going to be an ip packet and ip packets to destination and we're going to send it to my gateway, my router. That'll make it easy. So 192.168.8.1. Okay, that looks good. And we're going to send, let's see here, to TCP. And we're going to send destination port. So D port, destination port equals. And then inside of brackets, inside of a list, basically, 21, 22, 23, and 80. So close bracket. Uh, and then no close two parentheses here so that's what it looks like so I'm gonna send and receive an IP packet to my gateway it's gonna use the TCP for transport the destination ports are gonna be 21 which would be um, FTP 22 SSH 23 telnet and port 80 which would be HTTP and we should see four this should send and receive four packets Okay, let's take a look. And we'll hit enter. Okay, so it has the, it sends the emission. And then what we're going to do is notice it's finished sending four packets. So it begins the emission, it finishes sending the four packets. What I'm going to do now is uh, basically it's sending and receiving. Okay. Um, and you can see here we got a response. We got one response. It looks like we got no response, then we got a response, then we got no responses. Well, that's because my gateway probably doesn't have an FTP server. It might not be running an SSH server, definitely not a Telnet server, but it might have a web interface. So we should have gotten one response from the router's basically web management interface. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a control C to get out of that. And it tells me received seven packets got one answer remaining three packets so you can see here that um, you've got results and you've got unanswered packets so there was there was answered packets and there was unanswered packets and you can load those into scapy by saying creating some variables so we'll say ans for answered comma unans so unanswered okay equals and then just basically this underscore will load all of the data in there. So the underscore represents everything that we received. And then we'll say, we'll enter that. And then we want to look at, we don't want to look necessarily look right now at the unanswered. Let's just look at the answers. So ans dot summary. And we'll look at the summary of that. And you can see here TCP, FTP data, uh, HTTP, okay. Looks like a sin and an ack. So it looks like we've got, with the HTTP request, looks like this right here is sending back from the gateway to us a sin and an ack. So if we tried to do a three-way handshake with the gateway, we just got a reply. Now. I want to run this next command, which is pretty good. So let's check this out. For send, comma, receive in the answers 
print a hex dump of the receives, the packets that we received, and then also receive dot show. So show us also the replies. So we're going to loop through the answers here. So we're gonna loop through the answers and for the send, for the sent packets and the received packets, we want to print out the ones that we received, a hex dump of them, and we also wanna show the details of the fields in those packets. And we hit enter twice and there they are. So yeah, that's pretty cool. There's the hex dump. Notice I, there's from the gateway to me, the source port, there's the web server, destination port FTP data, that's curious, but it's from the web server to me, and it looks like uh, it was a sin and an act, so I'm guessing that it was trying to finish the connection, essentially. And uh, that's it. So that's kind of cool. So we send and receive. Now we can also send and receive. Another thing that we can do is we can send and receive on a loop. So all for that, you just do, instead of just send and receive, it's SR loop. And then we put in the, it's gonna be similar. So IP, and we put in the destination that we wanna do. So this time, once again, I'm gonna put in DST equals, and I'll put in my website. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna send a TCP will be the transport and the D port destination port will equal 80. And we're gonna also specify flags. So in the TCP transmission to my website on a loop, we're gonna contact my website. It's gonna be on a loop, destination port 80, because that means my HTTP server on my website, but the flags we can set we could actually do a, um, a SYN scan, or basically a SYN attack by, a SYN flooding attack by saying the flags are S. So we're only sending on a loop to the website a SYN packet, which would essentially be like a SYN flooding attack. And we could also specify how quickly it's gonna happen, how fast and what the timing would be and all that. But right here, we'll just test it out. Let's give it a test. So we hit enter and whoops. Looks like I may have, I think I needed a second, let's see here, I need a second parentheses here. There we go, now it's finished. Okay, hit enter and received one, received two. Notice the sin and the act coming back to us. This is a, basically a SYN flooding attack against my website by sending repeated SYN requests, sending a multiple times of trying to establish a three-way handshake and getting the SYN and ACK back, but not completing the three-way handshake because it's only just we're only just sending the first of the three handshakes. So the second handshake is coming back to us and we're not sending the third. And you can see it's just over and over again. So I'll just do a control C to end out of that. And you can see the results here. 37 um, TCP packets sent, 37 packets, and then we received 37 packets. So that was pretty, that's, I don't know, that was pretty cool. All right, we can also plot pl uh, packets on the fly. And let's see if we, if we can do that. So what I'll do is I'll do an up arrow here. And so this time what I'm gonna do, and I, once again, I pulled this, these, these interactive tests right from scapey.net. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say A and B equals send and receive. And this time we'll go to somewhere like, well, we'll go to the same destination, let's say. And TCP, this time what we're gonna do is we'll change what we're sending here. So the TCP, at the TCP, at the transport layer, we're going to specify the source port. So this time we did the destination port last time. This time we'll do the source port. 
and we're going to make the source port equal to in between brackets random short function. So basically the source ports will be random. So it'll look like it's coming from a different source each time. And we'll do that times 20. All right? Or maybe we'll do it less, times 10. Okay. And then what we can do is a and b equals send and receive. All right, that looks good. Then what we can do is, uh, no, it looks like I needed another parentheses here. So I missed a parentheses. There we go. So error sending packets. Uh, all right. Let's take a look here. A and B, send and receive, destination, TCP, source port equals rand short. Ah, we need to close that off before. So yes, I see the issue. Okay, so rand short, close the bracket here. like that. There we go. So we call the rand, random short function here in between the brackets times 10 and that should be it right there. So enter and you can see begin the emission. It sent 10 packets, received 12 packets, got 10 answers from the destination. And now what we can do is we could plot out our answers. So remember we loaded these into the A variable and the B variable for basically what we, I think what we sent and received. So let's use A and we're gonna say A and we'll plot this out. We'll just automatically plot it out and we'll say, we'll call a lambda function and X colon X and in between brackets one dot ID and I think that should plot out the sent packets let's take a look and there it is so it opens up the plot now you can see here it's just these sent packets here and notice there's 10 of them if we count them there's 10 but you could see that you could actually you could use these plotting capabilities to plot out the information that you're getting from Scapy, which is a powerful feature, which um, yeah, that could be that could be pretty cool. And there's all kinds of you can also chart the information in the console as well. All right, so the video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to show how Scapy. I'll show how Scapy can be used to create malformed packets. How you could create um, basically old school network attacks using Scapy by just creating a packet that's not that's created in a malformed kind of way. All right.